When I first started in the audiophile hobby, I always came across the term audio chain whenever I was doing research on audio gear. I would always end up on forums like HeadFi or Reddit where the audio community would always argue about what components of the audio chain should you purchase first and which are the most important. So what exactly is an audio chain? An accurate definition of an audio chain is the system from how music is recorded, processed, and then reproduced. But in relation to audio files, I want to skip music recording and music processing and focus on the last part of the audio chain, which is sound reproduction. Sound reproduction is the system that allows recorded music to be played back with a high degree of accuracy, with minimal distortion and no loss of detail. In the case of sound reproduction, the audio chain is the high fidelity playback system consisting of different audio components. Each component should be of high quality since each can have a significant impact on the final sound. And research should be done to ensure each component works together with the others. The playback system must be capable of providing an immersive listening experience by reproducing a wide frequency range from low bass to high treble frequencies and reproducing high dynamic range, which is the difference between the softest and loudest sounds in a piece of music. At a high level view, the three main components of a sound reproduction system is a music source, an amplifier, and speakers. I'll break these down. The music source is the component that provides the recorded music to the playback system. Common music source components include CD players, turntables, music streaming devices, a digital audio player or DAP, or even a laptop that plays local music files. Let's say you're building your sound reproduction system with a turntable as the music source, which plays vinyl records. You've done your research and decided to buy the Project E1 turntable. But there's a problem. The output signal from a turntable cartridge is low level, so a phono stage, also known as a phono preamp, is required to amplify and equalize the signal before it can be sent to the amplifier. The Project E1 does not have a built-in phono preamp. You'll need to buy a phono preamp like a Project Phonobox DC to boost that signal before connecting to an amplifier. So now your audio chain has your E1 turntable connected to your Phonobox DC phono preamp and it's ready to be connected to an amplifier and speakers. An alternate solution is to buy a turntable with a built-in phono preamp like the Audio-Technica LP60XBT. This bypasses the need to purchase a separate phono preamp component. Or there's a third solution, which is to buy an amplifier with a built-in phono preamp like the Cambridge Audio AXA35. What if you want to build your playback system with your laptop loaded with high resolution music files as your music source? Your laptop will need a digital to analog converter or DAC to convert the digital signal from your music files to an analog signal so it can be sent to the amplifier. Your laptop will have a built-in DAC, but since you want a high fidelity sound reproduction system, you'd want to buy an external DAC, like the Cambridge Audio DAC Magic 100. So your audio chain will have your laptop plugged into your DAC Magic 100, and you would connect that to an amplifier and speakers. An alternate solution is to buy an amplifier with a built-in DAC, like the Cambridge Audio CXA81. This option lets you plug your laptop straight into the CXA81, ready to be connected to speakers. You've got your music source, and now you need an amplifier in your sound reproduction system. The amplifier is the component responsible for boosting the audio signal from the music source to a level that can drive speakers. It provides the power, or amplifies the signal to ensure it's clear without any distortion. We've talked about amplifiers that have a built-in phono preamp, like the AXA35, or the CXA81 that has a built-in DAC. Another option to consider is an amplifier that has both the phono preamp and DAC built-in, such as the Yamaha AS801. You decide to buy the AS801 to give you the best of both worlds using both digital and analog music sources. Note, 
I've only talked about integrated amplifiers, but there are options to buy separate components for preamplifiers and amplifiers. I might talk about the pros and cons of that in a different video. The last major component of your audio chain is the speakers. The speakers are the component that converts the signal received from the amplifier into sound. They consist of one or more drivers, including woofers, mid-range drivers, and tweeters, which reproduce different frequencies. High quality speakers reproduce more detail and nuance from recorded music compared to lower quality speakers. You decide to buy some bookshelf speakers to match up with your AS801 amplifier. So you buy the Polk Audio Signature Elite ES20. There is another option to consider. You can skip buying an amplifier and buy powered speakers, which have an amplifier already built in. Take for example the Kanto YU4 speakers with a built-in phono preamp. With these, you have your phono stage, amplifier, and speakers all in one component. You could plug in your E1 turntable directly into the YU4 speakers and that's your audio chain. An audio chain will need cables to connect the individual components together. High quality cables ensure that the audio signal is transmitted with minimal loss of quality. Cables connect the music source to the amplifier and connects your amplifier to the speakers. I'll revisit your audio chain using your laptop connected to the AS801 amp. You decide to buy the AudioQuest Forest USB cable to connect your laptop to the amplifier. This cable is triple shielded to reduce interference and is engineered to reduce jitter. Then you buy some AudioQuest G2 speaker wires to connect the ES20 speakers to the AS801 amp. Before I go further, I want to talk about the advantages of having separate audio components in your playback system. The biggest reason for this is that you can upgrade and tweak each component separately without having to replace another component to meet your situation. The disadvantages of having separate audio components is that it will be more expensive than integrated components. Also, having additional components is going to require more space and maintenance. It will add layers of complexity to your audio chain and can complicate the connections of each component to each other. You got your audio chain set up. To provide the cleanest electrical power to your system, I'd recommend a power conditioner. A power conditioner is a device that filters the electrical power supplied to the components, removing any noise that could affect the audio quality. It also ensures a stable and consistent supply of power to feed your playback system, and it protects against power surges and spikes to extend the life of your components. You decide to pick up the Panamax MR4000 and plug all your components into it. The last thing in the audio chain I want to talk about is room treatment to improve acoustics. To get the best possible performance out of your speakers, your room needs to have echoes and comb filtering under control. Acoustic treatment can also help control bass response, improve clarity and definition in the music, and helps with accurate stereo imaging. To get you started in acoustics, you buy a pack of two inch GIK acoustic panels for your room sidewalls to address early reflections. I didn't cover speaker stands. If you have bookshelf speakers, you'll need a pair of these. What about Bluetooth? The audio community will continue to argue about the sound quality of Bluetooth regarding its compression, loss of detail, and dynamic range. However, Bluetooth is an excellent option to explore in your audio chain if convenience, portability, and affordability are your requirements. I would throw Wi-Fi and AirPlay in the same bucket as additional options that are available out there now. I always have to give props to audio guys who are way more knowledgeable and experienced than me. So go check out Randy from Cheap Audio Man's video called Beginner's Guide to Building Your First Audio File System. He's been in audio since the 80s and he provides some great stories and insight. His channel is high quality and I always rewatch his videos. To summarize, an audio chain or a playback system is a type of system that is designed to reproduce sound with accuracy and detail with little to no noise and distortion. The common components of your audio chain will be a music source like a turntable, an amplifier, and speakers. Remember that your system should be designed to deliver high quality sound production for an immersive and enjoyable listening experience for your ears.
not anyone else's ears. And it should always reflect what your situation and needs are. Thanks for watching this video.